Um, so I'm Luann Redeye. Um, I'm Seneca, so I'm from Western New York originally. It's a small town called Salamanca, which is on the Allegheny Indian Reservation. Uh, there's hills, like rolling hills, a lot of trees, a lot of water, so the environment is very different from Santa Fe, for sure. Um, and it's a small community, so everybody knows everybody. I'm like related to like everybody, probably. <laughs> like a lot of cousins, extended family. Given that the city of Salamanca is within the limits of the reservation, it's unique in that it's the only reservation with a, a full city. I mean, it's small, it's tiny, it's like three um, stoplights now, but it has a school district, you know, um, uh, a supermarket, a grocery store, a bunch of gas stations, of course, and like a McDonald's and Burger King. So it's unique in that sense. So it's a, a big stop for a lot of people who are going, passing through on the, on the freeway. So I lived there, like grew up there, but then I moved to New Mexico in 2008 for grad school. So I went to UNM and then I just stayed. So I live in Albuquerque now. I, I wanted something different and to go a little bit further away from home. Um, and then also I only focused on schools in the Southwest because I wanted um, a location that had a larger native population. So that's what I was looking for. And then I knew coming to Albuquerque with that in mind that my art, which focuses on like uh, native, my community, um, or Seneca, that could try to uh, get into the art scene here, which is much bigger. Well, when I first got here, yeah, I sought out the feast days and went to those and the different cultural things, like the, and then also going to the Indian Pueblo Cultural Center as a way to st still feel connected, just being my first time in an urban setting like this, and I don't know, I, f I feel like I just more set out the, that sense of community and belonging. Um, and I felt like that's what was, felt the same. Like it's traditional for me and, that, and that's the technique that I've developed, yeah. But in a lot of artwork that you see that is you know, native art by a native artist, it's definitely, um, it looks different. You know, it's, it's a lot of work that you see is like flat, abstract, um, very, graphic and pops a lot with a lot of color. And for me, I feel like I've developed this style just mainly out of the challenge of wanting to know the medium. So just keep pushing, you know, the techniques that I'm using and then um, looking at other artists, kind of uh, like any artist, not just native artists, um, and seeing like how far they've been able to develop their, their style and technique and I want to keep and I want to follow something like that, just keep pushing in. Um, and then part of it being the control of, of the painting and that I can mani manipulate the material how I want. Yeah. So I like the look of it more looking, I like that it looks more realistic. I, I don't consider myself a realist painter or photorealist. I think for me, I just keep painting and painting until I like it, until it's done, and then I think just through the technique, it looks realistic. I would consider it that it, it is native in native art because I'm native and I'm painting it. But yeah, for like considering um, like the larger native art world, it, it's, it might not fit in exactly, but. I'm going to keep painting like this until it does, like until like it becomes more like mainstream. When I first started out, I felt like I needed to include those signifiers of like, you know, Indian so that people would understand. But now I, I don't, I think I consciously leave those out because, you know, in everyday life, people don't do that. They don't look like that, you know? So that's why I like painting these portraits is that it shows like the person within my family or community friends, um, that this is them, you know, just in their everyday setting. And since it's, you know, I'm taking the photographs, I mean, they are native, even if they aren't wearing what people would typically want to 
associate with that. So I started screen printing in 2013. Um, I had actually never taken any sort of printmaking ever before. And when uh, working at CNM, you get some classes covered if you take them as, as faculty. So I took printmaking and uh, other classes because I like to keep learning new things or keep building on what I already know. And um, I was really drawn to the screen printing because I could incorporate these designs that I like to work with, like designs that are pulled from beadwork or quill work or um, some metal work that's specifically Seneca and um, combine that with the portrait. And I feel like that medium works really well with the two. I tried working with the designs and painting, you know, in my realistic way on top and I felt like visually it just wasn't working, but screen printing just it just fell together, which I really liked and focused on that for the past couple years. I think part of what might draw people to the work, but also make them kind of resist it, is that it, it looks different and that the designs that I'm using are very floral. I get Indian market, a lot of it is, is Pueblo um, designs and work. Um, which look very different. I think for the screen printing, there I like to use a lot of color and it is, you know, graphic and flat just given the medium of it. The portraits are very specific, so I used in one a portrait of Corn Planter, who was a Seneca chief in the 1800s. For me, for my work, I like painting the portraits, the genre scenes, because I want the people who I know to be represented and seen outside of like this little bubble that we live in. And for me, I like that in the photographs that I take or in the paintings that I do, that they're relaxed, that part of it being that you know, they know me, we're just talking, we're just hanging out, so that kind of helps. But they're just in their living room, like the painting that's behind me, she's in her living room, they're in their bedroom. I'm photographing like what's on their bookshelf or on their dresser drawer. And part of that for me is that I feel like that's authentic to who they are, that there's no performance there of like, they have to put on something that in some way would show that they're native. It's just that they just are. And that's part of what I, I like about it, that for, for me that I identify as native or as Seneca, that it just is that in what I do, is native, that what I um, paint is native, just because that's you know, what I live and experience. Yeah, so the project I'm working on here at SAR is very different than what I normally do, in that I'm incorporating new techniques that I haven't done before, and especially new styles of working that I've never done, and I'm liking the challenge so far, and hopefully I will when it's, when it's done, it'll be successful or that I was successful with it. But so for the painting, I'm incorporating uh, photo transfers of photographs of me when I was younger, of me with my grandmother, me uh, with some cousins, of uh, the house I grew up in, uh, the old house that used to stand down the hill before the Kinzu Dam was built and then flooded and destroyed. And then the design work with the pattern of the birds and the flowers. And so using those photographs in the transfers to add context to sort of this idea of things that I'm remembering, things that I'm reflecting on or thinking about in the scene that's, you know, from today, from now. And so that's kind of a challenge because you have to think steps ahead before you even start. So knowing that I have to reverse the image and then print it, and then when I apply it to the surface, it's gonna transfer the right way, the right direction, which is hard because sometimes the image will transfer completely perfect, and then the next time it's, it won't at all, and parts of it will lift and come away from the, the panel, and you have to do it all over again. So I traced the figure in the middle of the painting, um, just the contour lines of it, and 
flipped that over so it was reverse kind of arranged the photographs in a way that I, I liked, just visually what I thought was varied and not you know, too repetitive in terms of color or pattern or value. And then used carbon paper to transfer the contour line of the tracing onto the photograph so that I could then kind of cut exactly to the edge and then start filling the figure with those pictures. So in the end, the the pictures that I selected will be underneath the skin and the clothes that I'm wearing because it's a photograph of me and my son. And the same with the pattern on the rug and the chair and the couch. Those are more of like the foundation and then I'm going to paint on top and kind of start building up some of the forms of the shapes, like the value, the volume of it. Well, it was definitely a shock that I res that I got the fellowship, um, you know, because there's always the anxiety of like the weight of wondering if you got something or not, and then a lot of times you don't, you know, it's part of the job of an artist is that you apply for a lot of things and a lot of them just don't pan out. Which, but I was very happy to receive this fellowship because I feel like to me it says that um, whoever saw my work, saw potential in what I wanted to do, just because my application didn't really have much in terms of like images of what I want, like was doing already, like I needed this time to actually get working on it. So this is a, a beaded picture frame. So this would be entirely beaded at the center and you know the person who bought it would put their image in the middle. So it's started off as a, a tourist item, the picture frame, but then got incorporated back into the, the community. So um, people still make the frames and bead them. Um, for me, I wanted to use their shapes and the technique of it uh, more as like a, a symbol, I guess. So each frame has a different shape, each frame has different um, imagery, and each frame would be a, uh, mean something and is supposed to represent a specific person. So this frame is, is for um, Elliot, who's my uh, son, and I took one of my screen prints cut it to the shape of the frame and then beat it around and made it into this because I liked the idea of like the more contemporary medium and imagery or technique combined with this more traditional traditional um, shape. So this is one of the other frames. I think this would more closely resemble what we would consider more traditional Seneca beaded picture frame. So you can see the characteristic raised beadwork, so it's three-dimensional, it comes away from the surface. So the other frame was for Elliot, and this one is for my grandmother. So for this, I wanted it to be, you know, obvious that I took care of it. You know, a lot went into it. And the fabric in the background is very specific, so I, uh, after she passed away, I saved a couple of her clothes, and so the fabric for here is one of her nightgowns that I saved and cut. So this would be an image of her at the center with the house that she lived in for pretty much her most, most of her life and that I grew up in, my aunts grew up in, and some of my cousins. And then two images of her, one, you know, her as a, an older woman, old woman, and then as a, a younger woman. Each frame is a different shape and each frame having a different material, different style. So I have one for my son finished, my grandmother, and then this is supposed to represent my biological mother. Her and I have a very difficult relationship because I was raised by my grandmother. So the things I know about my mom aren't very good, my experiences with her. So that's why I wanted to use these red porcupine quills, you know, red kind of representing anger or things like that, and then have them poking into the frame. You know, when you approach 
porcupine, if the quills are facing out, like the sharp end, the spiny end is pointing out, I feel like that represents more of a, a protection, like you can't get close because it'll shoot towards you. Ah. Versus this, I have the spiny sharp ends, you know, poking into it, meaning I'm protecting myself from this. Um, so it's an image of her with her ex-husband, and then the background is the Allegheny River, which flows through the reservation, and then the house is the old house that was standing before it was destroyed because of the Kinzu Dam. There's a lot of emotions there in my, in my feelings for her and her for me. Um, but yeah, I felt in this, just because it's my work, I can choose what I put into it. I didn't want their faces. So I, and as part of a way to kind of suggest skin color, I made hers brown and his, you know, the paint over his face white. With these frames and being very deliberate with color and material and the imagery as well. My project at SAR, part of it is to finish the last two. One frame will be for me, to represent me, and one frame to represent my dad. I'd say I'm about halfway through mm -hmm. the painting, just kind of how I work and how far I know I want to push the painting. Let's see, and then the photo transfers that I applied earlier are now peeking through in some areas that I've already painted. In photograph, or if somebody's standing far away, it's hard to see, let's say in the rug, some of the designs, but when you're standing up close to it, like you would if you were in a gallery or something, looking at it, um, or in a studio, then you can see that detail, which is what I wanted. I wanted it to be subtle, because I like to work back to front in my paintings. So thinking of like, what's furthest away, being the wall, the curtains. I would paint first this cabinet and then kind of making my way forward. So probably the last thing I'd paint may end up being my figure, just because I'm a little nervous to get started on that. And then in the curtains, behind the curtains or in the window, I applied some other photo transfers. So again, it's really subtle. You have to get up close to it to be able to read some of the information. Um, but it's more descriptive to add context to the images. Like in this panel here, it's an article about the Kinzu Dam and how it affected um, the community. The old house that was occupied and then destroyed after the dam came in and then sort of the new land and property that was kind of given to my great-grandmother. So I've had to going to change up how I work, which has been hard because I like to work in layers with the oil paint and kind of build the realism of what I'm trying to capture. And for this, because I want the information to be seen and readable, it's been hard to kind of hold back and know where that line is to still keep the information visible to me or to the viewer, but still add enough paint so that it still reads in the space as believable, as three-dimensional. So the designs are directly uh, referenced from uh, like the beadwork designs that are from my tribe. And so um, the birds are significant, and I guess it's kind of funny that it coincided with my time here, is that they represent spring. So when the birds come back, migration that the berries come back which are these shapes here that are more abstract but they bring back the berries the flowers the um, sort of the plants so that's kind of signifies that I don't know I hope in a couple more years maybe five more years that I'm still I know that I'm able to keep pushing the I don't know, the, the subject matter, keep pushing the context that I'm working with. To incorporate more of the gel transfers is as much of a challenge it is, and I hate it sometimes, I still, I still want to keep trying, keep working with it.